Good afternoon. Welcome to the Action Drug Rehab Hour. I'm Kerry Quashit. I am your host, and it's great to be here today. Also, I got Robbie Robinson with me. He's going to co-host the show today. Hi, Robbie. Good morning. Good morning, Good morning everybody. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Well, yeah, it shows you how I always think I it's know. morning. Me too. I'm so used to getting up early in the morning and training. Right, so. and we've got some great guests with us today. They're going to share some experience, strength, and hope. Oh, Courtney Quashin, listening to the radio. That's my daughter. I love you very much, oh, Courtney. Yes. Okay, so listen to this. I just got to read this before we go any sure. further. My gratitude, thankfulness, and so much love and appreciation for the assistance and well wishes of all with my beautiful passage of Miranda to Heaven. This is a kid, guys, that I dealt with. I did an intervention on the Doctor's TV show. A few years ago, she was just turned 13, an insulin-dependent kid. And uh, about three weeks ago, she started calling me. And you know, for the last four months, she's been calling me for help. But she was too medically compromised to go to her rehab. So we kept getting her in hospitals and that kinds of stuff. But the drugs took over and the diabetes got bad. And she was found on someone's porch um, where she was staying dead. Oh, and my condolences to Linda, the mom. And um, I can tell you this. Um, I've been doing this for 40-something years, and a, a mom could not do more than Linda did for this kid. You know, and, and, and I'm so freaking mad at what's going on out there today. And I want you all to hear this. Every freaking day I'm telling people, if you go out there and use these freaking drugs, you're going to die. And they go out there and they use these freaking drugs and they die. It's driving me, it's sickening me. Because every, listen to this, every freaking drug... (laughs) And I almost blew it because that's how mad I am. It is not real today. Every pill out there is fentanyl. Period. Unless you get it from a pharmacy in your hands from your doctor, it ain't real. Doctors are not writing prescriptions. Every pill out there is fake. If you're using cocaine, it's cut with fentanyl. If you're using crystal meth, it's cut with fentanyl. If you're buying Percocet, it's fentanyl pills. And we keep telling people that, and they keep saying, oh, yeah, I know, and they go out there and they freaking die. You can't win this game. This is a game nobody can win. Nobody listening to this radio show or watching us right now or isn't watching us or what they're doing is smarter than this drug. You will never outsmart this drug. It will get you. Experimenting with drugs today is a death sentence recreationally using drugs today is a what? A death sentence. Yes, Robbie? That's correct. I mean, there's no way you're going to win this deal. We have Narcan that's saving lives. Now they're putting what they call trank or xylazine in almost all the fentanyl. And it lowers your blood um, it lowers your blood pressure. It lowers your heart rate. It lowers your breathing along with fentanyl that does the same thing, so chances of overdoses almost doubles. And Narcan don't work. It's immune to this. So you guys can't win this game. You are not smarter than the drugs. Parents, listen to me. You better talk to your kids because experimenting with drugs today could be a death sentence. And I hate to say this, but this email or this Facebook thing, I'm so freaking livid that... It's the number one killer right now. It is the number one freaking killer. They say from 18 to 45, and I say bull. How about from 16 to 45? And you know where they're finding everybody? In their freaking bedrooms dead. You know how many parents I know that have found their kids freaking in their bedroom dead? Over half a dozen. I personally know. You were at group last week with me. That's correct. Did you hear that, Dad? I heard the father... Um, give his... Uh, we never met this dad, Never did we? met him. Never what did he him. say? He said he found his son uh, dead in his bedroom, and I wanted to say... 16 this, years old! 16. The thing that I wanted to say, the wages of drug use is death. The wages of drug use is, uh, use is death. 
and it's Russian roulette. Do you all hear this? I mean, do you all yes. hear this? Do you really hear this? Yes. I mean, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm not mad at you. I'm just so no. mad at this situation, man. I'm so freaking tired of die- these people dying and having to bury them and yeah. giving a parent a hug that says, Carrie, thanks for trying. Yeah. It's terrible. Sorry, Robbie. That's okay. Uh, it, 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 people know what's going on but refuse because they say it's not going to happen to me. Oh, they're just too slick for that. Yeah. Come or the on. consequences... Yeah. The console, years ago, the consequences were you went to jail, you went to rehab, and you got help. Now people are not going to jail. And so now the consequences is death. It's just a matter of time. As, as my great-grandmother used to say, you may get by, but you don't get away. You guys are in, um, you mind if I share a little bit about you guys? You guys are in rehab with me, right? In yes. some way, shape, or form. Yes. How many people that come into my rehab? that's been using opiates, have been Narcan back to life? All of them. Everyone. What? Everyone. What? Every Every one of them. What? Every Every one one of them. How many times? More than three. More than three, four. Is that right? Overdosing five times. Five times. I've got people that's overdosed twice in one freaking day. Yeah. Oh, yeah. What are you guys thinking? They're not. They're going on a feeling. And a feeling can get you killed. Smarter than the drug. That's well, here's, true. Here's what happens, okay? When, and I'm just going to do it quickly. Um, we ha- we all have a brain. Well, I would hope so. Sometimes I don't think so. But our brain produces what? Dopamine. What? Dopamine. Dopamine, serotonin, all that stuff. What does those chemicals do? Get you. They make I you have... feel good. Yes. So when we're putting an outside substance in our brain, even if it's alcohol. It's now tricking our brain to believing what? That it doesn't need to produce mm-hmm. these chemicals yeah. mm-hmm. that makes us feel good because we're getting it from an outside source. Yes. So yeah. all of a sudden you come, you, you come into rehabs where you get sober and your brain's not functioning correctly right away. No. Yeah. So it's not producing all those chemicals. So you go into a funk or a depression. Does that make sense? Yeah, yes, sir. Yes. And yeah. then what happens is your brain goes into fight or flight. Yeah. yeah. I'm miserable. I want to die. I can't stand it. I need to fix it. And your brain tricks you. to. I mean, before you know it, you're using a drug. You don't even know why. Yeah. And so when you tell people, why'd you do it? And they go, oh, no. Oh, guess no. what? <laughs> they false don't know. Euphoria. False or false euphoria. But the scary yeah. part of that is, is... So many of these people that are dying die, and they've been clean and sober for a while. Yep. Yep. So what happens is they get that part of their brain that says, oh, man, life's so bad, stress is so hum- ter- terrible, my depression is so bad. And the brain says, go, fix it, and they do. But what happens is their brain needs more mm-hmm. to feel that feeling than their body can handle. Yes. So they use, bang, too much. Their brain says, good job, and their body says, good night, goodbye. Yes. And then we bury them. Mm-hmm. You're right. Somebody said it's Russian roulette and nobody's smarter than the drug, and that's about the best way I could say this. The drug has no feeling. The drug has no principle. The drug has no ideology but to kill you. Yep. And that's what it's all about. I was Today I saw a guy I was doing business with, and he was vaping, and um, he was just, I mean, very good. He was vaping, and I saw him pouring the, uh, the liquid into his vape. And I, told, I didn't say anything, but in my mind, it's just a matter of time before he has some type of a nervous breakdown or something. Because they said, well, the vape, it's, it's all good. No, it is not, because it leads to other things. Or you might say, well, I've stopped using drugs, and I just vape now. But you're still killing yourself slowly my gratitude thankfulness and so much love and appreciation for the assistance and well wishes of all with my beautiful passage of miranda to heaven so freaking sad, sad. so re- so set and senseless it shouldn't happen so how old was this girl carrie she was 13 when i did my intervention on television yeah on the doctor's TV show, if you look my name up, you could watch it, actually. It's the doctors, and just put my name, and you'll see Miranda in one of the shows I did with them. Um, 
she was um, 13 then, as probably 10 years ago. It's probably 23 to 25 years old now. Yeah. Still young, super young. Dude, we've been burying 18 year olds. Man. I was working with Kerry. I've been working with him for two years now. And I remember one of the young ladies I was trying to help get into um, central casting. And we had talked, remember Kerry? And I was talking with her, and she was making progress a little bit. Oh, I want to do it. I says, okay, these are what, this is what you have to do. And then one day I came and I said, where's so, where's she at? And Carrie said, she's gone. She's back right out in the street. Living on the side of the freeway. Living this girl on the side was a of the nurse. Freeway. Yep. She was a nurse. She ran programs. Oh now she lives on the back, in the back of a freeway in a tent and with needles and drugs all oh, yes. over the place. Oh, and she Lord. says, you know what? That's home for me. She told me that. She says, that's where I feel the most comfortable. And I walk out just like you would in your home. I go barefoot outside and breathe the fresh air and go in and go home in my tent. Now, I'll tell you, man, there's a whole lot more to life than that. Anyways, I'm on this freaking roll today, and I'm really pissed off at the drugs. You know, and, and I have a saying, which be. we can't say here, but I'll say it in a different way. The heck with alcohol and drugs and everything it does to you and everyone you know and everyone it affects is I use a different word when I say that. Yes. Somebody actually sent me a T-shirt saying that. Yes. F, <laughs> alcohol and drugs. It was, uh, yeah. But we won't yes. say that because it's, it's the, first of all, it's the number one killer. That's, look, let's look at it this way, and then I want to hear your guys' story. They, over 100,000 people died last year. We know that, right? Yes. It's going to be a lot more this year. But those 100,000 are confirmed accidental drug overdoses. Confirmed accidental drug overdoses. What about the unconfirmed? You want to double that number? At least. So now let's say 200,000. Okay, let's add some other stuff to the list now. How about driving under the influence? You want to triple the number now or quadruple it? How about domestic violence? How about child molestations? Yes. How about armed robberies, car crashes? And murders. How about suicide? Yes. So we could take that 100,000 now and times it by about 10. Yes. And you'll be closer to what's really going on with this epidemic right now. Yes. It's the worst epidemic or crisis we've ever had in this country. True or false? True. True. You guys yeah. agree with me? True. Yes. I agree. Or am yeah. I just crazy? No, no. Or am I just some jerk that is... Throwing, blowing smoke up your, you know what? No. 100% no. right on. No, no, not that. Okay. So, <laughs> all right. I got to breathe. <laughs> Cause, because I'm really, I mean, I'm, I'm so freaking tired of it. So, you were here before. Yes, Grab I Grab that mic. Okay. You were here before. Yep, I was. And you were really fresh in sobriety. Yeah, I think it was 50 days and, last time. And you're back now, because yeah. I saw you at the at my groups today. I said, come with us. <laughs> so tell us a little bit about your story and what's changed. Uh, my name is Jillian Ruiz. I am 74 days sober Yay. today. So. <laughs> um, I have two DUIs. Um, I'm getting charged for a felony for um, the second one. I had a court last week, and they... Mandated a scram bracelet. Um, yay, yay, bracelet. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> Instead of a $100,000 uh, bail for jail. They should have put the one that goes around your neck, and if you drink <laughs> alcohol, it gets tighter. <laughs> <laughs> I know when I told you, you told me that, and I was like, mm. <laughs> but so Explain what a scram bracelet is so everybody knows. Um, it's an alcohol... Um, ankle monitor that detects any alcohol and it is super super sensitive literally to the point where I have to change all my products in my entire house I cannot touch hand sanitizer I can't be around anyone that's drinking or has any alcohol in their system because it will set it off so if you kiss somebody that drank oh you're in trouble <laughs> oh yeah I really this makes me really happy by the way oh my god <laughs> and scram brace, neck, braces um, anklets don't come off no. You shower with them? Yeah. You I sleep with them? I have to sleep with it, shower with it, and I can't go swimming, and I can't take a bath. I have to take a shower. Actually, there is things you can buy on the internet mm -hmm. that you can do all that. Oh, okay, okay. So if you Google it, you'll, on Amazon, you could buy stuff that will cover that up so you can go swimming and take <laughs> baths and all that stuff. <laughs> That's good. That's good to know. What so, is it called? A scan brace? Scram, scram brace. Scram brace. So, but the, it, the great thing about it is if she drinks, it goes to this... Um, 
to a computer and it goes to the court. Mm -hmm. And then she's uh, going to jail. Did you get any community service? Not yet. She's they, still in, they, court. She's they, still in court. I'm still going through the court, court system. Okay. Yeah, what my they, next court What they did is May. they gave her a scram bracelet versus bail. That's good. Yeah, yeah. she got lucky. That's mm -hmm. very good. Because yes. with two DUIs and, and your DUIs were no jokes. Oh, no. They were very, very bad. Well, quickly, what happened? Uh, the first one, I was um, going 80 miles per hour, hit the railroad tracks. My car did a 360, hit four other parked cars, and a light pole went straight through my car. Um, every seat in my entire car was smashed except for mine. And so, obviously, my car got totaled. The second one, um, I was going about 65 to 70 on Vasquez. It was really windy. My car lost control, or I'd rather say I lost control. Um, and a head-on head collision with another car. You were under the influence of alcohol? Yes. Okay. The second one, I did get arrested. I blew up point two eight. And so lucky that the persons that you hit or yourself didn't die. Yeah. I understand people do get a little hurt. Though. Yeah, I did find out on uh, my court that it was severe injuries. It was two concussions, and one of the girls has muscle aches that she's getting physical therapy for, but they're not pressing charges, thank God. So. All right, so how do you feel now that you have how many days again? 74. How does that feel? feels pretty good. Um, just doing one day at a time, and I'm very thankful that when I did go to court, the DA was on my side. So that shocked me. It shocked me. Um, but I had notes from action. I had notes from work. I had every single meeting I went to. I hit about... I think it was 90 meetings in 36 days or something like You're that. You're really serious about this serious. sobriety, aren't you? Yeah, yeah. I am. I'm going to stay sober, and I don't want to go back. And you don't ever have to. No. I always just like I tell everybody, you know, if you do this thing right, you never got to do it again. Yeah. You don't drink. You don't use no matter what. Exactly. You go to your meetings, and you do your therapy or counseling or whatever it is mm -hmm. you do. You pick associate with people that are like-minded that aren't doing any of that anymore yeah and life gets good or you let your mind convince you that you know what i was young and dumb and i can do it smarter and better now yeah and that never works yeah we see what happens to people who do that yeah and i'm also i also have a part-time job I'll work five days a week and i go to iop and i do meetings on top of that what's iop um, out, uh, intensive outpatient program. Yes, and you you're so much different. When you came in, I mean, you came into rehab. You was like like sh uh, shy, scared to death, little kid. <laughs> and I was like, oh, this poor girl. Yeah. And now you're like alive, <laughs> and you're you're um, you could see your pride. You know yeah. that you're happy and you're taking care of business and your self esteem is way up. Oh yeah. When I was talking to Daniel, because he was he came after me, um, he was like, "You you didn't talk? What?" No, you sat in the corner <laughs> and you were like, like, like panicked. Yeah, well, he's like, what? "What? There's what a no talking, a, Julie? What, I mean, is this the same person?" Yeah, yeah. Well, really? sobri yeah sobriety I mean. is giving you life. Yeah. yeah. See, and then, when you follow the, the when you follow what Carrie is giving you, and he gives you he gives you the framework. You know, he's giving you the framework. It's up to you to build a house, and the house is your own personal sobriety. And mm -hmm. once you get that sobriety, you're like, I know what it is like now to be on the right track. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of people get on the track, but they're not on the right track. Yeah. You're on the right track because you're doing the extra. And the thing is, you changed your strategy. It's like boxing. You can be mm -hmm. a great boxer, but unless you change your strategy against who you're fighting, it doesn't mean anything. Mm -hmm. So now you changed your strategy and you're living. First you were surviving. Yeah. Now through sobriety. Kind of. Yeah, and you're kind of. yeah, you were survive now you're living yeah. and you see the benefits of living through sobriety. Yeah. Isn't she cool? No, she is isn't she awesome, awesome guys? Yes. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. That's I mean awesome. really. I mean look at this personality that came came up with somebody that really I you didn't have much hope. No, I didn't. And, and now it's like you're like Robbie says, you're living. You're yeah. living. Living the sunshine. Yeah. yeah. Because even when Gina, um, Gina White, she works for the court system. Um, when oh, I went into I know her, her office, very well. yeah. When I went into her office, she was like, "Do you want to get sober?" And I was like, "Honestly, no." I straight up told her no. Mm -hmm. And then she called Carrie. 
Carrie's like, you're coming in. <laughs> Gina White is very is, is very good. She I go and see her during the week at court, and she is really about people getting on the right track. Yeah. So, you know, you have Carrie and you have Gina, you have myself. Anything that we can do to get you on the right track, that's yeah. what it's all about. To keep her on the right there track. You go. She's yeah. on it now. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, you are definitely on the you right track. You are the engine right now, <laughs> not the caboose. <laughs> So very cool. Yeah. Anything else you want to say before um, I terminate yeah. this conversation and go somewhere else? <laughs> um, I guess that even if you don't feel like you're going to get sober, there is always hope. Like Carrie was saying, I didn't have hope in the beginning, but I am living my life the way I want to live it now, and it's like ten times better. I could see the world clearer, and I'm, I'm just happy, and I'm very thankful for that. You want to take us on a break? I guess so. so take us on a break. Say it. Uh, we're going on break. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Welcome back to the Action Drug Rehab Hour. I'm Kerry Question. I am your host. I got Robbie Robinson, which is a civilian yes. interventionist Specialist for the Santa Clarita the Valley Sheriff's, Sheriff's Department. Department. And his job is to go out there and if people want help, his job is to get them help. That's correct. Which is very cool. I don't know many cities that do that. Yeah, so, no, isn't Santa that cool? Clarita is, is, and I work with a Great Sheriff Captain Diaz and um, my Sergeant uh, Diego Andrade, very good, very understanding, very knowledgeable, and I have uh, the latitude and longitude to make this work. And I couldn't make it work without Kerry Quashin. Let's let's get real. Let's I'm being real, real with you. Kerry Quashin has been very uh, vital to me as I'm working out here in the streets. Well, I sure appreciate your kind words, but I'm sure you would do fine. Without anyone, you're just a good guy, and you're, you help lots of people. So before we um, came back from break, and I mean that, before we came back from break, um, I read about Miranda, right. which is a kid that I dealt with that just passed away from a fentanyl overdose that I did an intervention on at the Doctor's TV show about 10 years ago when she was 13 years old, insulin dependent and using drugs, and she finally lost the battle to drugs and to the mom linda and I, I know you watch my facebook and stuff so you'll probably see this um i love you lots and uh and uh, you couldn't have done anything more than you did you were a great mom and it's just such a tragedy one of the many many tragedies that's going on in our country every single freaking day and then you shared an update on what's going on yep and uh guess what <laughs> i have no idea <laughs> Introduce yourself. Yeah, I'm Brian Portillo. And how did we meet? We met at Action Family Counseling. You came in because you were, I'll let you tell your relapsed. story. Relapsed. I relapsed um, with alcohol very badly. Uh, I was drinking too much Jack Daniels, too much uh, Jack Daniels honey, and it was messing with my sleep. Jack Daniels what? Jack Daniels honey. Mix. Hmm. It's like a... I never heard of that. Okay. Yeah, she's a mix. See, I've been sober funny. so long, I don't know any of the new stuff. Oh, <laughs> anyhow, yeah, it, it, I messed up because it. I was literally up for like three days straight because of that. Just you were very paranoid, weren't you? I was. Yeah. What was, you were? Weren't you doing some other stuff? Yeah, I, I was uh, messing with uh, uh, cannabis. Yeah, to but the to the point where it was affecting your. It was giving me what what, we, what I consider like crossfade type of thing crossfaded where i, I was just really 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 bad and uh it was my parents noticed it they were, yeah, they were worried the about psychosis and all kinds of stuff you absolutely were very paranoid and as I, as i was as well and i see um, so much of that with this cannabis right now it's just terrible but the you were drinking yourself to death too three days yeah 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 because i'm not, i wasn't a big drinker i, I was but once I started mixing, I, I had in my mind that if I mixed it, it would help me sleep. Right. When it did the complete opposite, and it kept me up, it actually brought my insomnia really, really bad. Right. So, so you would, you couldn't, um, no matter what you did, no matter what you smoked or what you drank, you couldn't go to sleep. Yeah, it was hard. And if I did, it was maybe hour two hours, three the most, and that's just not enough for me. I need my good seven hours, six, seven hours. Right. So you came in, and um, I know your mom was really worried. Yeah. And you came in, and you really wanted help. Yes. What happened? Why did you want help? I noticed that there was a change in me that I 
it was getting very uh, short tempered with people, and that was very different from my personality from when I was not uh, troubled. Gotcha. So, so then uh, I decided you, you, you knew you were in trouble, didn't you? Yes, yes. And my parents, I was like, yeah, there's there's no no denying it. I I need help, and my my mother and my father both helped me through this. They're, I thank them more than anything. They're probably listening right now, are they? I think so. You want to say Possibly. something to them? Just that I love them both. Tell them, not me. Uh, I, I, I love both of you, and I always will because I always have. And I thank you for helping me out through the struggles that I have in the past. And now I found a way to uh, move forward and to become sober and uh, be avoid, avoid all those t- terrible uh, habits I've had in the past. How many days sober do you got now? 25 days today. Whoa. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Really? 25 days. Yeah. yeah I'm so proud Let's of you, go. man. Was it that long ago that I met you? Yeah. yeah. The, the last, the, or excuse me, the first day where I, where I completely sober was the 24th right. last month. 24th right. of uh, March. Wow. You know, just so you all know, we have, there's all different kinds of care. When it comes to treatment, we have residential treatment, right, guys? Yes. And then we have outpatient. <laughs> yeah. And you, you came to just intensive outpatient, and you've been yeah. doing this. You, you didn't want to go into residential, and yeah. you're doing it on an outpatient basis, which I'm really proud of you. I'm proud of you guys, too. I mean, sometimes you just need more or different treatment, you know? And um, the good thing about when I met with you is I knew you were, you were scared. Yeah, I was nervous and scared, yeah. I agree. And you knew that you were in trouble. Yes, you had to stop drinking and using. Yeah. Do you know that time. you're always a, a sip away from going back to that psychosis and paranoia and all that? You're a, yeah. a, a yeah. sip away or a hit away. Exactly. Yeah. The hardest part about treating people is we have the only f- kind of dis- freaking disease that eventually our brain convinces us. Or will try to convince us that we can do it different and better if we try it again. Yeah. And it never works out that way. It's always the same or worse. Yeah. And the hardest part about me working with people in treatment is convincing them that it's all or none. Because most people go into rehab, they don't want to get sober. If they're if they're drinking is vodka. They guess, why can't I drink wine? <laughs> if they're drinking, if their drug is wine, why can't I use weed? I don't like weed. Mm-hmm. If their thing is weed, why can't I use cocaine? If the thing is fentanyl, I mean, they they try every way they can to convince themselves that it's not all or none, that they can do something different. And I'll tell you what, if you don't drink or use anything, all those issues will go away. If you yeah. do... Chances of all those issues coming back on steroids mm-hmm. is almost for sure. Yeah, right. you know. I see that now. Uh, yeah, so so um, you got this, yeah. I do. One I, day, I, one day at a time. Absolutely. Forever, one day at a time. I'll do my best, but yes, but today for sure. <laughs> for sure, yeah. <laughs> Good deal. I'm proud of you, man. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so much. Anything you want to say to people out there? Just to do the best they can because it's this, it's difficult world as it is. Everybody just do the best they can and take it day by day, and sh- soon everything will come back. Everything will be better. Does alcohol and drugs work? Not really. No. At first they do. I yeah, mean, I will be yeah. the first to admit. At first, yeah, it does. It makes you feel good. It takes you out of yourself. It makes yeah. you have friends. You're not exactly. shy anymore. But it turns on you. It does. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Real bad, too. Yeah. And it's not your friend anymore. And it's like when you're in a terrible relationship and you keep trying to keep it going, but it just gets worse and it hurts more, Mm -hmm. that's what happens. Yeah. Yeah. Alcohol and drugs are not your friend. And they never will be again. They're not my friend. And they never will be again. Mm -hmm. You know, and and I knew that. When When I got clean, it's been, this Christmas Eve will be 43 years. But when I went into treatment 43 years ago, almost 43 years ago, mm-hmm. one thing I knew, I didn't know how, but one thing I knew is that I couldn't drink or use anything anymore. And I knew that. Okay. But I did think life was over because that's all I knew. And I found out that life just began. Yeah. So I agree with that part. When you quit fighting it and you realize what it is, life gets better. And, it's true. and you've done that. So Thank you. I'm very proud of you, man.
Thank you. Robbie. Well, the thing good, is... Good guy? Great guy. I mean, he understands what he's up against. Like they said when uh, in the movie Geronimo... Uh, that was guy, a good movie. It was a great movie. He you see that movie? That, that was a great movie. Never. Watch it. He said, you don't know who you're fighting. <laughs> you, don't, you don't stand up for your men. You don't even stand up for yourself under tough situations. So now you're standing up. A lot of this has to do, um, I'm not being religious, but we have to turn to God for help a lot of times, and God will put people in your life mm -hmm. to assist you. You can't do it by yourself. No man is an island, you've heard that saying. So your parents saw that you needed the assistance, but you were willing. You were willing. Once a person is willing, mm -hmm. then things can start changing. It is work. Just because you say, okay, yeah, I want to do this, it is work. Mm -hmm. Your feelings will get involved, but in the long run, you will see that by staying, like right. Carrie says, staying with the fight, staying with the fight, it gets better. Yeah, it gets better each and every day, and you have you have great tools that Carrie is giving you, and you have tools that your parent. So you put those together, and things will work out for you. Thank you, man. Mm -hmm. yeah, and you do the work. I mean, you know, yeah. I'd love to take some credit, but I'm taking none. Yeah, you you, you do, do the work. work. Thank you. I, thank I you very much. You I wish I could crawl into everyone's brain, man, and just hit that little switch that says, you can't drink or use ever right. again. <laughs> but I can't do that. You yeah, know? yeah. So anyways, guess what? <laughs> yes, sir. Introduce yourself. Um, come Dan come in a little bit closer because All I right. make sure you're on camera here. Hello, everyone. I'm, I'm Daniel Robles. 37 from Batesville, California. I got a uh, 67 days clean. Oh, man. Good. Check you out, man. Yeah, what's up? So I started with this horrible um, Facebook message that I got about Miranda. Yes. And you guys, I mean, this is, this is why I do what I do. This is why Robbie does what he does. Yes. Because you guys are successes. Yes, right. And right now, you are a success. Period. End the subject. Yes. Thank you. Today you are I mean, you're a success. Sixty something days. Tell yes. me your story quick. My story I was taking a bunch of uh, Percocets, popping pills, and when you were saying earlier how all the pills are fake, I just had to thank my lucky stars because I was uh, pretty sure I was buying fake pills. And you I were buying been, pills, they were fake. Yeah. And, and I could just I, the way it is. There's no real ones. Yeah. So I could have been another uh statistic. Statistic, yeah, I could have been another death. But I was taking a bunch of Percocets, drinking alcohol, um, uh, ended up me losing everything, lost my wife, lost my family, lost my job, and it took me down a very sad road where I attempted suicide. And um, Tell I, us about that. I um, I was really depressed one day. I drank, uh, say, about a couple pints of Sailor Jerry Spice, Spice Rum, really inebriated. What is alcohol, by the way? It's a depressant. Depre yeah, so I, if you're depressed and you drink, guess what? Yeah, you get more depressed. Makes so sense. Yeah. I, I was at the end of my rope, so I took a box cutter and slipped my wrist. And right when that happened, something inside of me was like, I want to live. Deep inside that I never felt before. I would I want to say like inside my soul. Yeah. And I, and I thought I was the only one that felt like that I don't know, until I heard this story about the, the guy that survived the... Uh, Golden Gate Bridge. Yeah, jumped off the air. That was he crazy. said right when he released, right when his hands left that rail, he said, I want to live. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So uh, I thought I had, you know, I, was, I wanted to go to a place I'd never been in rehab before. say this real quick. Most people don't really want to die. No. You know what they want? Not to feel release, the pain Not to feel the pain. Want. Yes, release. Because it's so Release. Awful. But um, I just needed something. Never been in rehab before. So, so you cut your wrist. Cut my wrist. And, um, Obviously, you needed medical attention. Medical attention, there, yeah. Tell us what happened. The they took me to the hospital, got me in the ambulance. Uh, I ended up being in a, they put me on a 5150. Um, psych hold. Psych, yeah, yeah, psych ward, mental beh uh, BHU. Yeah. And then they were looking for a place for me. Um, so they put me on a 5250, a longer hold. And they found action, or my, my ex-wife found action. And I remember being nervous about coming here. You know, never been to rehab before. I didn't know what, what I didn't know if it was like, a, I was afraid I was of those cult, a cult or something, you know what I mean? But Welcome this is the to best. Our nightmare. Yeah. <laughs> this is the best decision I ever made coming to action. I learned how to find peace, how to do other things except from using, how to breathe, how to, 
how to talk, call someone up instead of being uh, machismo and you know holding into myself, bottling up. You know, don't don't don't. You can't. You're a man. You can't cry for anyone else. Well, that's the single you know biggest I mean? lie I ever heard. By the way, yeah. yeah. You know when a baby's born, what's one of the first things they do? Cry. And then yeah. we teach them that it's not okay. Yeah. It's a normal feeling that people have, and if you need to cry, you cry. Real men cry. So yes. Like yeah. Do. You have to yeah. feel Even it. Even girls. Feel yes. it. You have to feel it to heal it. Yeah, what? I said you have to feel it to heal it. Exactly. There we go. I love that. There, there we there go. go dude. I might yeah. use that. And, yeah. <laughs> and just uh, learning how, hey, talk to people. You're not a burden. And um, going to these meetings, these rooms, action, all the all the counselors at action, um, showing me there's hope. But listen to the stories. You know, I wasn't the only one that felt uh, suicidal or, hey, I'm, I'm a piece of, you know, crap or you know, something like that. No. And then I see these other stories. That they've been on the down low. They've been homeless. They've lost everything. And look at their lives now. And I want what they got. Mm-hmm. You know? How are you going to get it? I can't. He can. So let him. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Basically. Very good. And but you do got to do the work. Yes. Do gotta, you got to work, work, work this program. You can't, you you can't can, be you, not going you to meet. You can pray and turn it over to God yeah. and do all that <laughs> stuff. But if you don't do the work. That's yes. Right. You got to get in that big book. You got to work this program. You got to work it every day, you know. If, if we go if we go a little bit mm-hmm. of how, if we go at this thing as hard as we went after our addiction, getting those pills, getting that, you know, drugs, getting the, the alcohol, worse, you know. You remember waking up in the morning? Yes. You think about this while you're peeing, thinking about where you're going to get your yep. drugs or alcohol. Mm-hmm. Is the connect up. That's when you know you're yeah. an alcoholic or an addict. Yes. And you walk into the bathroom and the first thing thought is how am I where am I gonna get it? Yeah. All that effort from crushing cans and bagging them up and walking to the recyclers to get the freaking bottle. Just a little bit of that to this program and you'll get it. You'll have a better life. And tell us about your family, you, just so I know. If you don't fa- mind. Oh, um well, um this disease cost me uh, my marriage. I'm ha- I have a um, we're going through a divorce right now. But my kids still love me. I mean, how old, how old are your kids? My kids are fourteen and sixteen years old. They know where you're at. Yes, they know where I'm at. They must be proud of you. They're very, they tell me, Daddy, I'm really proud. You're getting help. How cool is that? You know, and I almost threw that all away. You know. What's their names? Vinny and Valentino. Want to say anything to them? I love you guys. You guys, my heart. Um, I'm so proud of you guys. You guys give me strength. Love you so much from the bottom of my heart. Vinny Valentino. Your daddy's back. That's right. Yes, sir. Your yes, Carrie. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, yes, right. You know, um, sir, just don't make it for me. But you guys, your daddy's back. Now the trick is he needs to stay back. Yes. Let, uh, me, let me just say this to you real quick thing. Joe Frazier was going to fight Ali for the third time. He had another trainer. His original trainer passed. Yancey Durham, and he was working with Eddie Futch. So they said to Joe Frazier, you know what you're up against. What are you going to do? He said, I make no excuses. I just do the work. Sometimes, sometimes the smallest thing that you say has a bigger impact. I make no excuses. I just do the work. You know, and I said this before several times. If you don't, uh, uh, Frazier said this, if you don't do your road work in the early morning hours, the lights of Vegas and New York will expose you. And I say, t- putting it into what we're talking about, if you don't do the program that's being presented by Kerry, you see, the world and the streets, you'll get exposed again. Yes. So mm-hmm. stick with it. You know, what, uh, yeah. you know what I'm sorry without action means? Manipulation. Yeah. Because we've all said sorry a hundred times. Yes. It's, oh, yes. it's now walk like you talk and do the work. And you guys are. And I'm really. Yeah, all three I, of you. I need to tell you, I told them already, I'm super proud of you. Thank you. And I mean that. And I love you lots. Love you too, man. Yeah. On that note, we're going to go on break. This is the Action Drug Rehab Hour. We'll be right back. I understood myself only after I had destroyed myself. And only in the process of fixing myself did I re- did I know who I really was. Wow, that's pretty profound. Yeah. What does that mean to you? Because you, you showed it to me and you wanted to read it. Want to read it again? I understood myself only after I destroyed myself, and only in the process of fixing myself did I know 
did I know who I really was. That's great. Explain. Um, I, it just hit it, that when I saw that quote earlier this morning, it hit me really hard because just when, uh, just a little bit back on my story, I went through a domestic violence case and I destroyed myself after that because I thought it was my fault and I knew it wasn't my fault. I, I realize that now and I drained myself so much in the alcohol and then the cannabis and I literally destroyed myself to the point where I... Like Carrie you, said last talk, I, I felt like I wanted to commit suicide. You were on a suicide run, girl. Yeah. I mean, there's no other explanation than driving 80 miles an hour on and crashing cars and doing it again and not wanting to give up on the alcohol. I mean, you were, it was a 100% suicide run you were on. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's a 100% change. Yeah. It's night and day. Mm-hmm. And now that I'm fixing myself, which was the middle of the quote, I'm actually finding out literally what I, who I am, what I like, what I'm going to do with my future. Who are you? I'm Jillian Ruiz. And? And I'm... Special. Special. And? Great. Great. Person. Person. <laughs> and? Mm-hmm. What do you want to do? Uh, with what would you my like? life? Yeah. Uh, well, I want to become a social worker uh-huh. um, to help all the kids in need. And it's also going to help that I'm a recovering alcoholic addict. Uh-huh. And I... I want to have my own business degree, too, because the system, I feel like, in my opinion, is not that great. So I want to have my own. Very good. How old are you? I'm 22. You have time. Awesome. Isn't she awesome? You have time. Oh, you can do an what intern. Do you, what do you say about that? Here, so what do you want to say to her? Oh, she's awesome. No, she's... her. Talk to her. Don't say she. <laughs> you are awesome, Jillian. <laughs> I remember when I first went to the Pyru house, I'm all bummed out, coming off, I mean, kicking. And she's this little light of sunshine. Hey, how you doing? You know, and <laughs> smiling. And, I'm dying. That's you know, what's going on. I'm right. dying. And, but but she's just so warm and welcome and welcoming. And she uh, she brightens up my day every time I see her. If I have a bad day, if I see her at a at corporate, and she's just a, a ray of sunshine. So when I heard the story, like, oh, Jillian came in. She wasn't talking. This, I'm like, what? Is it Jillian doesn't talk? There's no way. <laughs> But yeah, she's awesome. Yeah, when You're she awesome. when she snapped out of it, she you snapped out of it. Yeah, no, I won't. What do you want to say to her? <laughs> yeah, everything he just said is absolutely true because I felt the same thing when I went there, and it was great. And you you are great. Thank okay? you. I want you to know that. So, what do you want to say to him? You're doing amazing. Your story that I've heard is exactly like my story in a sense, and you keep doing what you're doing. How many days were you again? I'm 25 days today. Yeah, 25 yeah. days. I remember when I was at 25 days. You're almost at 30. You get the 30-day yeah. chip. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to yeah. be there. I'll be excited for you. Thank you. Thank you. you just one day at a time like you always say. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. What do you want to say to him? Honestly, the first day I, that I met you, you were like the first friend that I met because I just felt the connection. I, we were really close like right away. I was like, yeah, I don't know. I can't, can't, can't really... I was like, that's why I always try to talk to you all the time, man. And we kind of, we're, we're, we're building a friendship, man. Day by day, I think. Brothers from another mother? Exactly. <laughs> Brothers from another mother. Sister from another mother. Exactly. exactly. Sister from another You got misses. it. I love it. <laughs> anything, anything you want to say anything to her? Just thank you. Thank you for, for being great and being an inspiration because that, your age, I'm like, oh, my goodness. Wow. If she figures it out, man. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> She's going to rule the world, isn't she? Yeah, yeah absolutely. I'm yeah. Queen. <laughs> you know, you guys, you could still do and be whatever you want to do or be if you put the work in, like Robbie said. Exactly. And, and if you stay away from the crap, remember this. Um, you are who you hang out with. That's true. You are yeah. what you do. You start running with people that are partying still, you'll end up partying. Well, I yeah. can't do that no more. Well, you know, they say no, you can, but it won't work. On that same plane and carry, and this is constant association, bread simulation. Mm-hmm. That's an old saying. That's tight. Yeah. He's constant always found, association, yeah. bread simulation. Listen to Robbie, he's deep. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Hey, maybe we ought to call him Yoda. <laughs> hey, Yoda. Or Sensei. That's what my or Sensei, sensei exactly. Yes. He does teach karate, teach and, karate and boxing. And he is boxing. right. Oh. He I knows. was telling I was telling my students something that you guys were saying. I said you have to commit. You can't talk it. You have to commit to it. Mm-hmm. There's a difference between an oath and commitment. Yes, right. First, you get the commitment. Then you mm-hmm. take an oath that I am not going to do this again. To here, watch, right. Robbie. It goes from, from, from here, your head here to your heart. To here. The fight is in here. Yeah. The fight is close. That means it's internally you. 
-hmm. You have to fight with yourself sometimes before you fight with anyone else. Yeah. And that comes when talking about sobriety. Sobriety is internal, and then it goes here. And once mm -hmm. you get a hold of it, it can just help you through your whole life. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yep. And you know what? In, in, the, in the beginning, you got to be willing to do anything to stay clean and so right. even if you have to die for it. That's right. Because you were willing to die for the drugs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, and patience uh, pays because everybody true. around me has to be patient. Everybody around all of us mm -hmm. has to be as patient as they can. Yeah. And I am so proud of you guys. I mean, you guys are why I do what I've been doing. Somebody said, how have you been doing this for 40-something years? This is how. Because of people like you that are successes and that are making it, you know. And right now you are a success. The only way you're going to fail, guys, is if you, if you let your brain convince you you can do it different and better again. Yep. We have the only disease that, you know, the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again, expecting it to be different. We do things yeah. over and over again knowing it's not going to be different, but try to convince yeah. ourselves it is. <laughs> yeah. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. 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 But um, I want to tell you guys that I love you, that I'm super proud of you, that Robbie, is you're one of my heroes here in Santa Clarita. I appreciate and love you. Thank you. I, I, I mean, you know how much. Well, I mean, yeah, you're, thank you, Robbie. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. You're just thank a you. great guy, and I'm glad, very glad to um, be your partner in crime <laughs> or, uh, or partner in, let's change that word, partner in treatment. Yes. That? That's, yeah. that's and, it. On the, Mm -hmm. yeah, partner in action. Hey, you know, like yeah, that. There you go, we're, 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 we're what you call PIC, Partners in Action. action. Yeah. <laughs> so on that note, guys, thanks for listening. Uh, if you if you uh, watch this or listen to it, please share it because it's a message that could save some lives. And the more shares, the more lives we could save. And that note, until next week, please be safe out there and be smart. Have a great day. Mm -hmm.